Hello guys and welcome. I'm here again to show you the latest tool that I developed, which is this uh, nice little filter for Blackmagic Fusion, the heat distortion. There are actually many ways to achieve the same result uh, in Fusion. The one that I choose is really easy, really simple and fast. So let me show you exactly what's going on under the hood of this little macro. So, if you ever look at um, real heat distortion uh, footage, you will notice two different, two different um, elements. One will be the, uh, the displacement and one would be the blur. So, we will use uh, fast noises to drive both the uh, displacement and the blur. The first thing that I'm gonna add is the blur and uh, instead of using the variable which would be the first thing uh, I would think to use I'm gonna use the depth blur which is a little bit a little bit faster than the variable. So let's uh, change the blur channel to Luma and let's have a look the noise and maybe tweak it a little bit to get something more like more like this and also add a brightness contrast to clip the black and whites so now if we increase the blur size we will get this nice blur driven by our fast noise. The next step will be to add a displace and let's let's hook the fast noise in and let's add a create bump map tool. Let's leave the create bump map tool uh, right there for a moment and let's tweak the noise first and maybe do something like these to have a more fiery look something something like this it's actually okay and let's now go to the create pump map change the filter to 5 and uh, increase the height scale and what you see here is uh, something like a normal map which is exactly what we want for our displace node first thing let's change the type to xy instead of radial and keep the x channel to red and the y channel to green maybe we could use some expression to link the y offset to the x offset and y refraction to the x refraction and um, let's let's have a look at what happens if we move the refraction now now we get this strange sliding which is something that we for sure don't want and this happens because we have to normalize the the bump map and uh, we can use two different methods one will be using a brightness contrast and decreasing the brightness to minus 0.5 and if we have a look now, this is exactly what we want. Or instead of using the, br the brightness contrast, we can go inside of the displace and bring the offset down to minus 0 0.5. And we get the exact same result. Let's add some spread here. And let's see what happens for a moment. Yes, seems to be okay. I think uh, we are pretty much there. Maybe we can uh, link the two noises. I mean, a link the position of the center of the two noises that we have. And then uh, we can use another expression, for example, to drive the Y position of the noises using time. Multiply the and yeah this is the kind of action we're looking for and as you can see this is the result basically 
This is what happens inside of the macro that I made. Let's recall the macro for a moment. Hit distortion. Let me just change this one a little bit. Yeah. I prefer. So what we have in the macro is a display um, that allow us to display the blur noise or the heat noise or of course the final result. And uh, make this a little bit bigger. And we have these animation controls, we, I'm, which I'm gonna show you in a second. Uh, blur controls, which controls the these blur patches and the, of course, distortion controls, which controls the displacement. Then we have um, uh, all the controls for the blur noise and all the controls for the heat noise, which you can display, of course. And then we have this one, which is the heat mask, which I'm gonna talk you in a minute. So let's let's go back to the animation control. Let's use the heat noise to display it uh, more clearly. Um, so if I move this control away from the center, what happens is that the noise goes in the direction uh, of uh, this control from the center. The further from the center, the faster will be uh, the motion in every direction, of course. Also, we have this, this density control, which the higher the density, the slower the motion, the lower the density, the faster the motion. And this is it. So let's go back to the final result. I'm not going to explain all the other uh, controls because they are really pretty much self-explanatory, but let's have a look uh, to the masking of this effect. Let's recall an ellipse mask. So right now it automatically hooked it into the effect mask. And let's increase the distortion. Let's increase the blur size. And maybe we can soften the edge. Yeah, something like this. So, as you can see, using the standard effect mask, you have this kind of layering which maybe in some cases is something that you want but using the heat mask instead you will get a very different uh, look of the effect which in most of cases it is exactly what you will want so I think this is enough of an overview even if this one is really an easy little filter, um, I still think that having it into a macro will be, in some cases, uh, a, a time saver, which, uh, in my opinion, is something always good to have. So, I hope you enjoy this one, I hope you like it, and thank you very much for watching and see you in the next one.